like, uh, yeah, I, I don't know, like the one guy from the old guard kind of teaching uh, the young pod ones how to, how to play. Right. Pretty oh. much. Wow, it looks like we're already after the knife round. Not sure who won. Maybe, I mean, this is a map where it maybe doesn't matter so much, and, and I wouldn't be surprised if either team picked either side, but we're right to the action. Oh. Hampus just getting basically sprayed down by a series of Glock shots from multiple teammates on Epsilon, and Draken's still upstairs, and he's guarding it really well. He also kills what could be the only person to stick a fork in these plants. Now we can see they're trying to pick up a slack here, either decide whether they need to deal with Draken. Ocean has the bomb, and he wants to do a little bit more than I think he can handle at this moment. Draken doing an excellent job of staying alive. Another headshot for him. 4v2 at the moment. Epsilon up in numbers and not really offering up a very easy way for them to plant. I think Ocean could have could have looked down and planted, uh, planted yeah, default there. I, I think that would have been the better way to go about it, especially when you're down in, uh, down in numbers. You haven't really gotten control over the bomb site in a, in a really solid way where you can actually like fend off them necessarily when you're trying to plant. I think the best case scenario there is that you get a bomb plant, you don't buy the next round, you get a third round buy instead, yeah. and you might actually mess up the CT economy. Now instead, they're actually going to opt to do the go with the force buy here with Tech Nines. Not really any need to speak of two decoys. They're not going to do a whole lot, but it's going to be brute force or gunning for. Yeah, literally not even a flash to work with. So that might that might be a little bit of a problem for them. One flash can go a long way, and uh, Ocean's died early. So I'm not not exactly sure what their what their strategy was. I think they just decided let's let's <laughs> let's use buy a very that, little bit of money buy some really overpowered pistol to see what we can do. And a couple of kills do happen because of it. Actually, three in total. Two v two now. They've also potentially recovered a gun. I'm not. Yeah, they've ran over a UMP and an M4. That's a really big deal. Draken's got a lot of work on his hands, but Davey, really nice dink, followed up by a body shot to end the life of Draken, and Hampus is the last man standing for Epsilon, who might be trying to exit out of drop, throws a grenade, and forfeits his position. And now has to find two players who, one of them is very hurt, Davey is on his last little bit of health. And, oh, wow, even with that, comes out for the in the perfect amount of time and trades immediately. Headshot, three kills on the round, I think, in total. Yeah, Canada playing that after plant position as well as they could really. Like, sacrificing Davey for, you know, securing a round, or, uh, yeah, uh, sacrificing else, I mean, to secure the round, definitely worth it in that kind of a scenario. So just make sure that Hampus has to commit to one of them fully yeah. without, a, without having any real shot, actually, of, uh, of actually, yeah getting a return frag. Yes, so Els, Els did a good job going really wide around around yeah. the fountain, forcing uh, forcing uh, Hampus out of position. Hampus, yeah, Hampus to, to peek really wide and that made it really easy for Davey. Yeah. Would have been a 90 degree flick for him to get that kill. Good good frag from Rez off the corner of that smoke with the Deagle. Going up 5v4, the anti-eco, and then also having drop control in this way uh, could prove to be quite a problem for Team Canada. And it looks like they called out that boost, but it wasn't good enough, and he's also been able to fall back. 5v3 at the moment, and and geez, we just had a pistol round followed by a fierce uh, force-up, and, and in return, a force-up that might result in a victory for uh, for Epsilon. Yeah, the problem now is that, you know, well, the good thing for Canada is that they still have a bit of utility here to work with as if Epsilon has absolutely zero, so they're going to have to rely on their pistols fully. The problem is, if they, if they don't have any sort of execute they can set up, it's going to be really hard to actually get on the side because you can see they're already stacking towards that B bomb side on the CT side. Ooh, and decided to go B, but they have to meet the Deagle of Rez, and, and, he's, and his teammate's also taking a bit of damage. It's now just Davy alone left in the clutch once again, gets killed, and that's five alive for Epsilon. It's kind of weird how after, after that last round, they just... Uh, got completely destroyed yeah just just absolutely eviscerated yeah i think uh, i think it was rest who was playing b plateau uh during that anti-eco as well mm -hmm. uh, that they ended up losing and i think he bungled up a bit of uh, what he wanted to do in terms of how he held his peak and how, how he held his angle to get caught out by davy because initially like they didn't really have too much pressure on them freddy taking out two uh or getting a two for one trade and drop room like shouldn't be too much of a hassle for epsilon to deal with considering they have more Powerful weaponry. Mm -hmm. Now we got the economic game of chicken. Yeah. Another force up. It's a very common sight to see. The thing is that I, I, I think the game really stops when you do lose and not and don't make it close. Like the last yeah. round, the Epsilon had five alive, so minimal re no no revise, just some u uh, utility buy ups, maybe a couple of kits here and there. But they they aren't spending a lot of money, so Team Canada have a little bit more on the line than they do. 
Now the four four tech nine or it's three tech nine P two fifty and uh, AK buy can be really good on T side. You can lead with that that AK if you get yeah. two kills, you win the round. So. It can be really good. I, I do fear, though, for Canada that the the first Tech 9 round, they actually, or the one round they won, was a bit of an anomaly due to, you know, misplays coming out from the Swedish side. Mm -hmm. And if they were to lose this one, then they're going to be in dire straits completely. And you don't want to give a team like Absalom, they actually started to, you know, chose to start on the CT side. You don't want to give them too good of a start on wow. a side they already feel comfortable about. Well, even with that drop control, Rez has decided to push long B. He's got quite a bit of information. I mean, a teammate has gone down. Draken evens up here. And we've got Freddy coming out of the drop room, looking to do a little bit more damage than just that. Has tagged a couple of players down really low. The bomb is in a very awkward position. Each player one hittable with this Mag 7 from almost any distance. And oh, I guess I lied because Els does come away with a life. Rez, however, is extremely low. And in a 1v2, this is almost anybody's game. He hasn't spotted that the bomb has crossed onto the default plan zone. That Molotov gonna be gonna prove to be quite effective. It's gonna force our man L's out into an awkward spot, but Rez unable to capitalize. Back APC now in a 1v1. This AK and this patience, just hoping that one side of the truck will be peaked, but L's is really waiting. Really waiting. Doing a good job here baiting out uh, uh, a reaction from Rez as opposed to the other way around. And now has decided that he's going to be on that side of the truck. And actually, the 1v2 is no good. It seemed like Rez had a good chance to win that, especially considering that Els only had a Tech 9 to his name. But them both being one shot apiece, yeah. made that really 50-50. Once again, Epsilon bungling up uh, an anti-eco. And uh, again, well, first time around, it was uh, B-Long that got out of control. Uh, this time, it was Drop Room that just completely bungled it. I think Freddy definitely should have been able to, to get two frags rather easily, actually, and probably sooner than what he did. And, or he only ended up getting one in total, but mm -hmm. definitely should have been able to get two or at least make sure that his teammate stays alive, which would have staggered what Team Canada wants to do. So, I mean, uh, you know, pretty risky stuff from Team Canada, the fact that they won that. Yeah. Um, they had they had pretty much, they had a lot on the line, and Epsilon actually don't have enough money for a very comfortable buy. I'm sure they have a little bit left over, but figure they can just save one and uh, work from there. But, uh, you know, they don't, they don't necessarily have to change much, right? No, not, not necessarily. And uh, already, like, Canada's kind of already won the, the initial fight of this game. You know, you talked about the, the economical game of chicken here. And the fact that Epsilon are just not opting to go with any sort of Kevlar at all is a massive win for Canada, especially because they're opting in with, uh, with MAC-10. So they're going to be able to, like, potentially build up quite a bit of money here. USP battle comes out. No kill, though. John G stays alive. And uh, something we'll talk about is actually Team Canada is playing with a manager right now. Yeah. Uh, which is the one, one of the one of the, one of the toughest one of the toughest handicaps you could probably have. I mean, a player yeah. who yeah, he's not a coach, not a coach, not, not like <laughs> not, a relevant he's pro. He's a manager. He's a manager. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, and uh, I mean, doing pretty shout, well. Shout out to him so for far. playing and being able to play. That's great. Yeah, but they got. I mean, obviously, it's not something they often they wanted to. They got stuck in a pretty terrible situation. Yeah, that they had nothing to do with, or that like they couldn't be actually I know, at fault for that. Yeah. So Hades land dodged. Yeah, <laughs> Hades that's land dodged. One of, the, one of the worst crimes. And I, like, I, I think the only thing that held higher and and uh, like you know that that deserves. Not, like, not the death penalty, but that can get yeah. you exiled from the CSGO community to oh, be cheating, sure. right? It's like cheating and land dodging are the two, basically, and, the worst things. And you I mean, do. to go full cliche, land dodging in 2017, like, I w I, like it would have been more understandable if it's like, if it's a tournament in China, it's 2007, you have to pay for it yourself. I can, like, it's a viable excuse to be like, you should be I, I can't actually with your it. plane ticket and complimentary hotel Wi Fi. Yeah, ex exactly. Like, everything's paid for. There's no reason for you to not show up. Unless if you're a massive dick. And you get to get drunk in China. Anyways, Draken gets an op pick to kick off this round. They decided to save, and yeah, yeah, it was like the 1v1 before this round, so they had like more of a reason to buy than Team Canada did on the round previous yeah. and, and decided not to. So just, just a little bit more playing disciplined the long game. in that sense. Yeah, playing the long game, exactly. And I think, obviously, with Epsilon deciding to start on the CT side, they probably feel pretty comfortable in what they can do with a full buy, right? Or, you know, something close to a full buy versus Team Canada, who are, like we alluded to already, a bit of a mix, right? They're not going to have the same preparation that they initially thought they would with Hades, uh, you know, deciding to not show up. So Epsilon Farm really feeling pretty comfortable about this. Yeah, tough sledding. Good drop control right now. A lot of patience on these Vamas bullets, not wasting a single one and managing to get out there. Good timing. Calls out that the peak is not going to come out. Maybe they were going to throw some utility to 
to help them get out, and uh, they were correct about that, but that's a really important kill from Rez. This split is shut down now because the players are kind of kind of closed in at drop. If, yeah. if you have someone, you have a split with, with long B, and if Rez goes down, then you've got players from Epsilon that have to worry about drop, but then also have to worry about another choke point, but that single frag makes the difference when you're you're locked in and you can't I mean you can reboost one person up but your options are limited you're down a man so many things so many things bad about that situation but because they they did force that save out of epsilon they've they've been able to surmise another buy yeah they have and uh i mean well if you're candidate at this point you, you kind of want to keep it going you want to keep the pressure up you want to have some sort of control over, over the ct side money and you know getting an opening frag that's a great way of doing it oh john g actually kills for Oh, Els is the one who took all the damages down to one HP, and our man right here is so close. Those two headshots, really fierce. But Hampus ends up going down. Els showing us why it doesn't matter if you only have one health, if you have a good spot to get a kill from. Has made quite a bit of noise now. And, uh, oh, Barbar, that's his name. I, I yeah. totally forgot who that was. <laughs> oh. That backwards typing. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my gosh, what a round. Four kills. Not too shabby, and uh, a bit of a different take on how we see like a lot of the t uh, top tier teams play that drop room area. Barbar just kind of committing fully all by himself, doesn't really have any backup in that situation where he decides to take the challenge and drop. Mm -hmm. So, and that's obviously if you're feeling confident about uh, you know hitting your shots, then by all means, if you can be successful with it, go go do it. But yeah. a lot of the times, that can very easily spiral out of control if you lose control of drop. Especially if you still have presence towards B-Long, as you mentioned in the previous round, right? Mm -hmm. Because it becomes so much harder if you're res in that position to actually deal with the fact that you have to ha constantly have focus on two angles. Split's just the ideal way to run your rounds, and once that split fails, you're really leaving your other teammates to their own devices. Not, not a good way at all. So, uh, back on the save, Team Canada have not uh, opted for any utility once again, and it, it makes the rounds a lot, a lot more difficult to to get anything done. I mean, getting into a site without a flash is yeah. quite difficult. A is really big uh, and long. And the only reason you might want to go A, I think it's just just because it's typical for a team to play like 4-1, so. Yeah, exactly. And I, But I think if you want to go A on, on a save round like that, you have to have like a bit of a, a sudden execute mm -hmm. of some sort. Not necessarily with like a lot of flashes or, or utility or, any, or anything for that matter, but you have to be able to close the gap between whoever's uh, defending that B, uh, A bomb site if you want to have a shot at actually making it over to the site because it's such a f uh, long way from where you have your you know typical dual spots or where you have first contact with the CT side player on that A bomb site to when point. you actually get to the bomb site. So rotations are going to be in time, and that's going to be just pure hell for you to deal with. Yeah. So there's like just that group up explode is what they were looking for. Yeah. And they got spotted a little bit early. Oh, now Draken's got a a prime angle. Oh, he spotted a foot on this door. Yeah, he knows. He's got that. He knows that enemy's really close. I'm surprised they didn't actually just moment. smoke off monster there. It's very common to do that, yes. It's surprising to not see it, but it looks like it wants to take it, and Draken just turns around, 180 op shot, and expects someone to be there to trade. He's correct about that. KNC goes down, and he puts on a third kill of the round with L's. And that leaves Ocean. ODK Kona Ocean in a 1v5 <laughs> situation. It's one for his efforts. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, a, a bit strange. It almost works out, though, because Draken, obviously, with it, that not being smoked up, doesn't really seem like he's expecting anyone to push through. So, mm -hmm. I, so I guess, that, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, in a sense, it could work, but oftentimes, I, I think you'd, you're better off just smoking that off and forcing a reposition from, from Draken. And you can see how effective he is. When he gets, when Draken gets going with his op, he's just an absolute beast. Yeah, he's sick. He's a sick man. Oh, the drop split, it looks like with that that deliberate smoke onto the Molotov, they just want to get down there because they said right out the gate, you guys are going out long, we're going out drop. And actually, the bomb's a little bit late, and they've all gone out at the back of drop. So this is a little bit of a longer entrance into the site, but it might have confused the CTs. Bomb's been dropping in an awkward spot, and Draken has to figure out where he's going to be most useful. Spots an enemy, but Rez picks up the slack. Two kills so far from him and KNC, now left alone. 1v3 wants to do a little bit of damage if possible. Can't find the kill. And it, it's been a lack of bomb plans for Team Canada. Yeah, no, it, it's been rough for them to get onto the bomb sites. And there we see Epsilon taking a bit of a different take on how to how to actually hold off drop room. Barbar decides to smoke off the the outside towards the, or the entrance towards the B bomb site from drop room and, and hold off from door. Because and then in, in that sense, you still have uh, I think it was Freddy on the site 
uh, who can hold off anyone who starts to go through go through the smoke. Mm -hmm. uh, Res still, ha or I mean, Draken still has control over the long area with that op, and you still have two people towards A who can fend off any sort of push coming in from connector. And then you're fine in that kind of a situation if you give up towards uh, anything control towards A halls, mm -hmm. because you're going to remove such a significant part of the Canada team that a retake is not going to be too much of an issue. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a, a smart way of going about it if you're Epsilon. You know, the polls came out and uh, they've just, just tried to discuss what what they could do differently and going into a buy that's really nice. A lot of teams use their pause and end up having a save and it, it's kind of a waste. Um, you gotta you gotta let the let the strategy resonate with your team. Yeah. Still be fresh in mind, but regardless of what kind of strategy you have, that's definitely not a part of it. And there's that that lower that's that uh monster, monster smoke, smoke as you yeah. mentioned, yeah. Ooh, a little spam from from Hambis. He looked like he wanted a little bit more, <laughs> but I think it's gonna go back for the reload. Uh, Team Canada started to maybe run on fumes. Didn't get anything going there. Have decided to five man a lot. Uh, yeah. the, I guess the one round Ocean decided to go down drop late. His, his team just got picked apart. I guess it makes sense for them to, because they're not going to be as prepared, going as five, it makes sense because you do give yourself the option of getting trades. So even though you're not you're not necessarily prepared in terms of like getting a pop flash in for your teammate to get the first initial pick, you will still have the chance of actually finding uh, finding the return and actually moving forward and getting map control off of that. Yeah. So I think it's just like a, a nice, solid way of going about it if you're not too prepared. I mean, uh, we've talked about the fact that Canada are, you know, basically a mix coming into this with not much preparation, but Epsilon on their end as well. They're not playing with a full lineup. Obviously, Kala, uh, being Norwegian, not liable to uh, or eligible to actually play for Epsilon in this tournament. So they're playing with Hampus, who's from the academy team of oh, Epsilon. Oh, yeah. I see, I see. So they managed to still raise that Epsilon banner, but they actually had to use a sub. Interesting. Yeah. Well, one of the guys from the... One of the youngsters. Which is weird, talking about a team like Epsilon, who's pretty much just young kids. Yeah. They are. They've just been like this. The a, a bunch of Swedish mixed players that eventually found their soulmates. And yeah. <laughs> are now actually firing on all cylinders. Like they're brought, all brought in Grandpa Barbar. <laughs> just like <laughs> is he, keeps old, is he older? Uh, he's he's uh, quite a bit older okay. than the rest of them. Still young at heart. Young at heart. Yes. If yeah. You're playing CS. You are young at heart. So Kanner's actually gotten drop uh, drop room control here. And Epsilon, even though they lost Hampus towards that A-bomb, so I decided to give up A-control completely. Mm. Flash goes out the back of drop. It's something that Team Canada have liked to do a couple of times. Barbar looking for that multi-kill. KNZ, however, is going to get right, or throw a wrench right in his plans as quickly as possible. The A-split's already going to come out, and they've already, and they've also are prepared enough to leave somebody in drop to catch rotators. Full proof, I yeah. think. Great headshot from KNZ as well, and that leaves Rez alone 1v4. This would be a hero play to do, but Ocean... Too aware of the potential for a big flank, turns around and ends that threat immediately. Yeah, that's uh, Epsilon obviously making that uh, bit of a risk call to, to stack towards that B bomb site. End up in a situation where the entire raw, uh, entire round, you know, lives or dies by what Freddy's able to do when he smoke dives through connector there. Right. If he finds one frag and is able to actually put pressure on Canada, which you know just allows them from actually picking up a bomb plan and everything, then that allows them to get a proper rotation in towards that A bomb site. But with him going down immediately. Because Canada are very aware of what potentially could happen, they're pretty much they pretty much know at that at that point that this is the only way we can lose. Uh, they're able to deal with it really well. Cold boost out at long B. No one to spot over the smoke, and they Rez has just just been kind of fluid over here, either yeah. moving from the stairs to uh, just under broken wall, and done a good job. I mean, he's barely had to use any utility. He's not relying on pop flashes. He's just peeking at the right times and uh, waiting as much as he needs to. Team Canada letting the cough burn down a little bit, hoping that somebody walks into the crosshairs. Sometimes patience really is a virtue in these situations because a team will be like, oh, all right, I've I have not peaked long B for <laughs> about 30 seconds now. I can do yeah. this. There's no way a team's just still waiting. But uh, that second smoke couldn't shy Davey away from that boost. And they've got someone watching the flank. I mean, the guy in the back has the bomb. They don't have a dedicated person, however, to make sure that nothing's being pushed. Somehow, Ocean, though, I think off the back of a double peek at drop, is able to take down Barbar, the two veterans of each team. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Rez is here right in front of the long V smoke. I'm not sure he has something to re-smoke it with, so his time might be limited. Yeah, he's, he's got a molly, and that's pretty much all he can do to actually hold Team Canada back. Wow, just sitting right in the Molotov, doing as much damage as possible. Uh, wow, I kind of like that discipline right there, but it doesn't pay off. And, and Team Canada, after being quite patient, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. That was the bomb. 18 seconds left. Could have dropped it. 
No one was really close enough to pick that up right away. But the smoke's still good, and Draken actually might have to decide to fall off. So a, a pretty good careful split that came out. I mean, they, yeah. they really were patient about it and then managed to get their first kill. Okay, oh, I don't know. Ocean, <laughs> okay, okay. okay. <laughs> I don't know if he was going to try Creating some excitement. Yes, yeah, for the fans. Everything he does is for the viewers. <laughs> But, and I mean, it, again, we see the issue of Epsilon with that aggressive, or, or with what we talked about with Barbar playing uh, drop room aggressively. Uh, Canada kind of realizing that he's all by himself, he doesn't really have any backup, goes for a double peek. Mm -hmm. And in that kind of a situation, it doesn't really matter if Ocean gets picked off as long as whoever's with him gets a return frag, right? Like, right. You've, still got, you've still gotten the area, and it still becomes so difficult for Epsilon, again, to actually play uh, efficiently from, from that point forward. Oh. Good nade to kick. Look at the nade really damage. Good oh my gosh, looking like a, a win amp equalizer right now. So, oh, Rez, however, has done a great job staying alive and also getting kills. The trade comes out, but a, a bit too late potentially. Davy has this off at long B, but he's also got the bomb. He's also got four enemies in the site. And what, what, what a pick from Dragon. Yeah. Oh, see you in another dimension. Well, Canada get sent back into the Stone Ages in terms of economy. It's kind of cool how they they actually barely have any kills each, but they all, all got a very equal amount and have put together yeah. five rounds. Yeah, like they've gotten the kills at the right time in that yeah. sense. Like when they've lost rounds, they've kind of just been slaughtered. But that's okay. Like you, you only need five kills per round to, to win one, right? So if you're able to spread that out at the right time, it's all good. Mm -hmm. I'm curious if uh, Kano wants to go back towards drop room because, again, we can see... Barbar's playing that position all by himself, and Freddy's not really in a position to actually help him out too much unless Canada decides to bum rush through, but the initial defense is going to be on Barbar all by himself. It's been largely individualistic for Epsilon, right? The one person peeking drop once in a while, and yeah. you know, Rez handling long B by himself. Exactly. They've just been doing such a great job at it that it hasn't called for much more. Um, that being said, Canada have still managed to put together rounds, and surprisingly off of patience when I thought a lot of like fast splits were going to occur. But here's not, not a great buy on the, what's going to be the last round of the half. Uh, door smoke comes out, and the bomb is actually stationed up towards A with one or two two players. So it's going to be a drop split. split. Barbar yeah. is going to have a lot of attention put on him. And wow, even off of that second flash, full blind gets two players. No one can even trade this. He's actually managed to escape. Now Els is so aware of the fact that somebody's going to rotate in to try to help him. but uh, And the threat gets deal dealt with immediately. Hampus also takes down the opera of the team, Davey. Uh, leaving Ocean once again in a 1vx situation. 1v3 now, 35 seconds remain. He has been spotted. A smoke and guys his escape. If he wants to either get out or go back, and great impact on that flash. But maybe just a small constellation prize as Rez flanks him and does all the damage necessary. And Team Canada come away with five rounds. I, I mean. There, there's there's close there's close ten fives and there's not close ten fives. I feel like some of the rounds that Team Canada won were actually pretty good. Yeah, no, I mean the the rounds they won, they were won confidently in that sense. Uh, even even their <laughs> even their eco rounds or their force buy rounds, they really worked out for them. The problem is obviously that for because the rounds that they lost were so dominant from Epsilon side, allow them to build up a bit of an economy. So you'd see them get multiple buys in a row, and that's what kind of spurred that run that they had over. I think yeah, six rounds in a row, right. and, and that kind of set the tone for Epsilon early on. Mm -hmm. oh, but, yeah. but I mean, if, honestly, better than what I expected coming out of Team Canada, Me given too. how rough, the, yeah, how rough, you know, their, their fought lead up to the tournament has been. I want to say, imagine if they had Hades, I have no idea. I, mean, <laughs> I honestly don't even, I can't even tell who's the manager. Yeah, no, I, I, mean, I, I, I Okay, so I know, we know Els, Ocean, Davey, and I think I recognize John G. I'm, I think KNC might be the manager. But I'm pretty I'm, sure he is. Yeah. I mean, it's super offensive if I got the <laughs> wrong person. I mean, you're from you're from Canada. You should know this. Yeah, I should. I just don't recognize one of their players. Yeah. Anyways, moving into the pistol round, John G. On the site, and it's pretty much the only person here. The rotator comes in. He ends up dying first. The headshot can't come out, and maybe it's John G. That's the manager. I'm not so sure. But uh, after blood is shed, two players from Canada alive. I'm not sure how many are up on Epsilon. Looks like two on the site. Damage has been dealt. Davies down to one HP, so, but sometimes all you need is a headshot. And they both moved off past the truck. Rez takes uh, a little bit of damage in return, and this is much more fair bout right now. Ocean knows that somebody is. Oh, oh whoa! There we oh go. my goodness! What On the guy with one HP, of course. I know. You know, in the frag clip, it doesn't matter. Just uh, hide those health bars. Now Ocean one on one. 
more HP, and the opportunity to win, and the Clutch Master, ODK Kona Ocean, comes through on the pistol round of the second half. Damn. Yeah, it looks like not a very favorable position for Ocean to be in there, but hitting some good shots. Managing to find the, the, pretty much the, the right target at the right time, like obviously connecting with the head on the guy who actually has HP mm -hmm. does, uh, does go a long way. <laughs> While Epsilon said, just had to get like sick drag shots on the guy with one HP. I know, right? Yeah, that was, a, that was an absurd shot. Yeah, but Jonji, uh, obviously, in that round, even though he doesn't end up with more than one frag, he stays alive for so long. Mm -hmm. That does wonders for Team Canada as they do botch a bit of a nade, but, you know. Yeah, so, like, your job, I mean, we could talk a little bit about this, but oh, we've, there, it, is a, it is a counter force up, so who knows what will happen. It's pretty quick play as well. Hamp is just getting sent out. Yeah, and it looks like they're just causing a lot. They're making a lot of noise over at B to make it seem like it's going to be this side of the map. But there's still two people that haven't rotated over on A. So I don't think Epsilon's strategy has worked out in the way that they wanted to. This smoke is also going to allow to himself to not have to worry about people running at him. But <laughs> coming through that smoke to call him out is Rez. Freddy also getting a Tech-9 frag for himself. And now you've got three CTs rotating. And they're actually surrounded by terrorists at the moment and maybe don't know it. Uh, the issue is, though, that... The bombs have been dropped in uh, towards mid, so there's no real way of Epsilon actually finding a way to plant this. And I think Anna are making the right choice now, just bomb rushing Raz on the site. They know that Freddy is over towards B. That's a very smart and very quick call from yeah. uh, from Canada there. It was there. quick, right? Yeah, yeah. It was, it They're was realizing the situation decisive. because so. yeah, because the only option can uh, Epsilon have in that situation is for Raz to chill out on site and wait for Freddy to get close up on the other guys. And the worst B. thing you want to do is get sandwiched. So. Exactly. Yeah, so a lot of teams probably would have sat there, tried to watch flank with one person, which makes that fight a 50-50. Instead, they say, we got to play our advantage right now. We know one person's on the site. We don't know where the other guy is. Let's just group up and kill him. Yeah. That uh, played uh, played to their favor. These guys are, are greased up right now. They're, they're looking really solid. Doing a good job. So uh, it, it's nice to see as well, because we all, so often we talk about how teams who are not necessarily that prepared, they struggle with making adaptations to what's going on on you know, in their play and whatnot. And it's like you said, normally you'd probably see them deciding to just go for the 1v1s in that situation, like every man for himself. Mm -hmm. No comms. Exactly. But instead, they actually make a concerted effort to, to do stuff together. Well, a gap in the smoke is going to be the end of Davy. Mm. And uh, again, a force up coming out from uh, Epsilon. Yeah, that is interesting. And I th definitely think that's what caught Davy off guard. Like, he can safely go into that peak if he knows he's up against pistols. But definitely didn't expect a little coming out on Rez. Oh, uh, Jonji could definitely abuse this. I feel like he's, he's the man you got to be careful about it. KNC going down on the site. This leaves L in a real L's in a really awkward spot. He almost he wants to stay alive, but he also can't just leave and be and force three of his teammates out to rotate in. Uh, Good flash neutralizes him completely, and Ocean on the rotate goes down. Five players alive from Epsilon once again on We've a force seen this up. Before. <laughs> and I think it was like just a highly uncalled for force up that ended up working out really well. A, f a Nova. Yeah. <laughs> no I, in many ways, very similar to what we saw from Canada, actually. Yeah, after right. they lost, uh, yeah, after they lost, like the, them deciding to buy up on a on a round where it doesn't really make much sense, but they end up winning it either way. It's kind of a similar yeah. thing. I think Davy Davy must have thought that they he was going up against an eco in that situation, yeah. and it, it makes sense as well, given how uh, how conservative Epsilon were with their money on their CT side. Yeah, but we were talking about how disciplined they were playing exactly and so on, and they they threw a curveball, ended up paying off. That's why nothing is cut and dry uh, in this game. And you really have to play your opponent as opposed to simply optimally all the time. Yeah. But uh, who knows what was going on in the mind of Epsilon. Well, drop control seems to be the initial ID for uh, for Epsilon here, but Hap's just going to get the first frag, though, over towards B long. Hmm. All right, now they're just playing it rather safe, not really committing too hard on anything, really. Just yeah. waiting for someone from Canada to, to show their heads. Canada giving them a lot of peaks. So yeah. It's like every time someone peaks you, wait a few more seconds, they give you more. You should win those duels. And uh, everybody's everybody's trigger happy in this, in this round. Yeah. I mean, and if you're Epsilon in that kind of situation, I think this is the right way to go about it because you didn't, they didn't have too much utility to, to actually just do like a... Uh, really sick execute with a bunch of mollies to just clear out every angle. They didn't have that luxury to them, so instead they decided to go uh, as a bit of a tag team all over the map to, to just see if there's anyone from Canada eager to, to show themselves. 12-7, to 7, another uh, another save. I, I mean, yeah, that, I guess that was just a real economy breaker yeah. around that Epsilon did win. 
Yeah, we often talk about that, how it's actually, you know, way worse winning the pistol and then losing the upcoming round instead of way just worse. losing the pistol. Confidence, and then confidence between, wise. Exactly. Yeah. And just money wise, long run. Yeah. So many, so many factors, so many reasons. A good couple of kills. The cleanup looked like it's coming out, but the, oh, and that uh, might be, <laughs> I thought he was trying to get that, um, get that AK. Yeah. Well, he does end up getting it, but obviously with that, <laughs> that stack towards the A halls, it's a pretty easy, easy call for Epsilon to go towards that B bomb side. You already have one guy just running out, clearing out, and everything. I think it was Draken as well. It's like you're as far as you possibly can from B from the B site. So it's uh, as a terrorist, you, that's an opportunity for sure. Yeah. And I mean, uh, yeah, we talked about it. Epsilon for the better part seems fairly conservative, so they're not going to be the the completely insane guys here. They're like, guys, I think all five are in a hall, so let's go there. Mm -hmm. They're uh, a bit more well uh, well balanced than that. And KNC trying to hold on to that AK. That's going to be really tough to do, especially with Hampus coming around the corner. Yeah, they they were on the hunt. They they pretty much had him closed in. No yeah. problem, dead to rights. Uh, it doesn't really matter too much for Canada in the long run. They do have that was their second eco, so they will have plenty of money to buy up. They're actually going to go for a double ops setup. What do you um, think about this adjustment? I mean, we haven't really seen them have a, like a proper buy round on their CT side, so I'm not really sure how they want to play it. If they want to play a solo guy towards A, I can definitely get on board with it. I'm not sure how, like I haven't seen Ocean enough to actually know whether or not he's a proficient opper or not. But we saw Davey pick it up on the T side he's at least. He's probably not the best opper, but yeah. uh, maybe, at a good, maybe at a good spot. Oh, some good day damage there. John G opening up the first kill, 5v4. Very important. L's also joining in. And three players are all pushed up, ready to deal with Long B. And they are shutting it down right now. It's not even necessary for Team Canada to have a single op. I mean, that's, that's going to be a surprise for them. If Epsilon win this round and don't, don't get a couple of kills, the Draken doesn't find out much, they don't even know that Team Canada have two ops. Yeah, and that's I, think, I think that's a big thing as well because you could tell that one of the reasons why that B push is so tough for Epsilon to actually get through is because there's four players on the B bomb site already from the get-go uh, from Team Canada. And they can obviously afford to do that because they have an op towards that A bomb site. And there's no way of Epsilon actually figuring this out by a round like that. Because they pretty much only saw two people, and that was, I think it was K and C and Els. Yeah. So, John G, I think John G got the opening kill. All three yeah, riflers, yeah. basically. So they didn't actually run into a single op. And I think even if you like hear the sound of an op from Davey, for instance, I think you can expect that because you knew Davey picked up the op on the T side as well. So it doesn't really give you all that much information. You still have no idea what's going on over towards that A bomb site. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's pretty good. I mean, we're still, you know, five round differential, but having a round where you keep five alive, enormous. Absolutely, Four especially five. on the CT side when you're running double ops. Like that's expensive habits. Yeah. Oh, nice oh, shot from motion. motion. Oh, Davey, trying his luck. Yeah. Yeah, so like you get that jumping in accuracy. If you do that jump, you can spot somebody, but you're not always accurate as soon as you land. Yeah. It's a fine timing. But then so that guy, guys like Kenny just no always, I, I feel like Kenny has like something fixed in his game to the point where he doesn't actually have yeah, that inaccuracy hacking. or something when he's he lands. Because he just shoots at any, any given time and just hits it every single time. Yeah, no scopes. But like right after he lands, he, he doesn't get the inaccuracy for whatever. He is, is one the, He is um, Kenny, though. He is Kenny. That's also true. He wills the game to perform as you like. Mm -hmm. But so good like you got Kusta, who's Kenneth Suin. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. And he's he's good sometimes, and maybe that's just because his name is basically I'm, Kenny. Yeah, I'm still a believer in Kusta. He is he is a really smart player. I mean, yeah. even when he misses, he still plays really smart, which is nice. Uh, yeah. well, Team Canada now. They, they, they do have a man up, but I like the approach they have right now. Well, that's not too great, but I do like the passive approach and, and drop room. And unaware of the ops, just kind of wide peeking, not expecting someone to be there. But Davey can't get more than one. Oh, that's a bit John of a G. problem because not, you're, you're also giving up the op. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you get an op, you're expecting multi kills or at least your teammate to stay alive. Oh, op in the cross, spotting the bomb getting dropped is nice, nice information. Also helps L's as this distraction has now required Epsilon to rush a plant. And so he can he can kind of walk out long, get some information. Kind of speeds it up a little bit. Draken misses a shot as well. Now it's a very critical 1v1 for our man on Team Canada. It's that Molotov's not going to flush him out to the right, but Barbar swings out wide and takes the head off of Els in the 1v1. 14 rounds now, 14 to 8. Is this an insurmountable scoreline? I, I would say so, especially because they're going up against a team that's fairly well prepared. Hmm. And, uh, well, Canada opting to use their second time out here. I think it's uh, it's as good a time as any, really. When upsets happen, 
It's it's when the 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 team that's uh, the underdog wins both pistols. Yeah. They get that quick five zero. Um, everything falls into place. And it looked like Team Canada, even without those things, was like still playing pretty good. And some of these yeah. CT rounds not so bad either. Well, yeah. at least they're they won their they've won three on in this half. Uh, uh, two coming. Okay, so they've won one rifle round or that that run round where they had the the double op setup. Yeah. Um, and now have bought down to zero. Really rough buy. I think Famas is. I don't know how you feel about this, but I Famas hate the Famas. I hate the Famas in general. Yes, yeah. I'm glad you're with me on that. It's terrible weapon, but especially on this map where there's everything is so far, far away. Apart, yeah. yeah, that's when it just gets. You really feel that inaccuracy and then just the, the lack of damage as well. Uh, is that, that's also when you get super triggered. If you've played any of the other iterations of CS, you know that Burst Fire was just like the epitome of accuracy. Mm -hmm. And in CSGO, they've just decided to make Burst Fire completely useless. Yeah. So, yeah, no, it's <laughs> it's rough. Not a great not a great weapon. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm the kind of guy who still buys a FAMAS and then immediately regrets it after. I kind of mm -hmm. wish there was like a, you know, a regret button in CS buys. <laughs> Because I, I make that mistake constantly. Nice molly coming in from uh, Davy there to break up the boost. Because you think I could have got a five seven? I could have got a full nade set. I could have yeah. got a kit. And or you could have got a UMP. Up a gun afterwards. Could have gotten a UMP or UMP. Mag Seven played close up. Oh my god! Like gosh. Davy's doing now to broken wall. Like whoever's playing drop room right now, for instance, could have had a Mag Seven instead. Mm -hmm. I think that would have been way better. Yeah, in drop especially. I mean, you could even argue that an M4 is not the best weapon to have in yeah. drop. Uh, so many close-up, high-impact weapons. Davy especially good uh, on long B with this, with this uh, Mag Seven. Expecting a play, honestly. It's kind of interesting how how spread out we have Epsilon right now, but they haven't been able to influence rotations that much. Team Canada have been very good about staying stalwart about where they're standing. There it is, a couple of really nice Mag Seven kills. Op goes down. Two players left. Man advantage, in fact, for Team Canada. And even though the bomb is out here, it's rotating back. Ocean, oh, however, not has time heard for that though. Yeah, this is. I mean, like, he literally. They, I mean, they have to get rid of Ocean. They've got a. They've got rotations coming in. There's. He's just got to turn around and save right now. Yeah. Uh, it's like even even if he, like even if everything went perfect, they still wouldn't have time to plant. Yeah. Yeah. He was. That was just four like, seconds. He wasn't even up the ramp yet. Yeah. Uh, at, at that point, uh, like that's that's a mistake that Epsilon need to just. That's when they need their players to be more aware of what's going on in the game. Like, Barbar, like, they've already spotted out the bomb because Davey managed to pick off two, and, like, he dies to the third guy, obviously couldn't see the bomb. Mm -hmm. And at that point, it doesn't really matter that Barbar picks up one of the frags on the A bomb side because it's not going to force a rotation because yeah. already Canada knows what's going on. Yeah. And they're, like, if, <laughs> if, uh, I think it was a Rez who wants, to, if he wants to go anywhere else with the bomb, he's going to have to leg it like no other. So they're going to hear that. As well, so it's going to be on Barbar to actually make the play to try to make his way over towards the B bomb yeah, side rather than the Rez, right? Closer to the bomb, as exactly. To to Instead of having Rez rotate Maybe he's the just entire map too around. alpha, man. You know, some people <laughs> are just, they're just like, so alpha. Listen to me. <laughs> you don't really think about what is what they said wrong. Uh, well, he just said, "Let's do this," uh, and I just. Want to succumb to his yeah. alphaness. So maybe I, I mean, in, in some ways, that is kind of nice to have. The, like, if teammates have full confidence in you, like, mm -hmm. basically your word is law. Trust. That, that's that's pretty. Yeah. That, like, that's more or less a necessity to have in, in a top team, right? Yeah. There was that round, for example, and here we have Epsilon kind of forcing up. But there, there was that round. Oh, nice shot from Mel's. Yeah. That round from Epsilon or from Team Canada, where they had that two v two, and they just both pushed into the side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, that was like. For, that's us, for us watching that, we're like, that's clearly a decisive call. They were people were listening and they trusted each other yeah. like, immediately. It says so much about them. Well, they're doing a pretty good job fending off this force buy for uh, for Epsilon as of right now. Mm -hmm. All's going down, but You'd not really to... giving up too much position uh, or positioning and not giving up the bomb set as well. So for Epsilon to actually get a bomb plan here, it's going to require a massive mistake coming out from Team Canada. Oh, oh well, my god. There we go. Okay. Two, I don't even know where the second kill came out from, but there's a rotator down. Draken also has a Molotov to use. But uh, here's Davey. Maybe, 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 maybe to come in for the cleanup. And he's already made a rotation around. Very good yeah. for him. Ocean Smart has by Davey. Ocean did a great job staying alive on the site yeah. in that situation. He's and about to get here. I, well, I, John G gets... A you know, unfortunate with the timing. Obviously, the second he like kind of turns away, that's mm -hmm. when Draken pushes through the smoke. And I mean, that's unfortunate. But that's he like, was also switching. Yeah. It, again, and that's like a tick that I think every CS player on Earth has. Yeah. And it's a it's a really bad habit. I don't even know why I'll switch after I'm done killing one target because I'm. I think oh, yeah, it's because yeah. I let my want to let my recoil reset, so it doesn't matter. Like I wouldn't want to shoot again until 
I'm, uh, yeah, yeah, you feel like you're, it's fully it's reset. It's something like that, right? Yeah. It's like that. Well, it's also something called the cap effect, actually. The cap yeah, effect. I'm not, not even joking. It's actually called the cap effect. And well, okay, what is it? This is the eco. This is yeah, the eco. yeah. Uh, so the cap effect, look, one of the reasons why you see people do the quick switch, especially when they're standing in stationary positions, is because when you focus uh, on, on a single target for a long period of time, eventually you everything turns asleep. into a blur. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, you lose focus by focusing too hard, which is, you know, weird to say, right? That's why I'm... That's why I'm almost certain. Well, I, I think you know how Stewie has that like really insane tick right now. Where oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think he does that for different reasons. Probably a little bit because of but, that, but also because I don't think he wants his mouse to get like too. But I, I, th I think that's bed. like a different way of dealing with it because the one of the ways, like the way or why you quick switch is because when you quick switch, there's a difference in what's going on in your screen, so you refocus. Yeah. So that's how you deal with uh, you know staying sharp, I guess, in your head the entire time when you're holding a passive angle. Yeah, that's and it, I think what that's I Stewie has the like wheel. the different thing with it where he like shakes his mouth a lot uh, when he's like standing in stationary positions, holding an angle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's his way of dealing with it because it's still like a change or a movement on your uh, on your monitor, and that's going to refocus you. Yeah, yeah. It's actually and it's a, a way safer thing. way. It's a it's way better a way of thing. going about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, as opposed to quick switching, which is just so so dangerous as we've seen. Um, and uh, like Scoodle's got the you know practice this shot every time he's holding an angle with the yeah. love. Not not bad habits to have for sure. Have some effect, and uh, yeah. So now now this is a pretty critical round for Team Canada because Epsilon might be in a buy save buy save situation even yeah. with, with their even with their building up their loss bonus they're not at five yet so. Good opportunity for Canada to actually make this game quite competitive. Yeah, and one of the reasons why, well, they kind of need to have people stay alive as well, because sure, Epsilon are nearing match point, but Canada are in a position where they don't really have too much money saved up. I think there's one guy on 5k at this point. Mm. Uh, the rest are around 2k, so you're not going to have the greatest of buys either, and we know how important utility can be on, on the CT side. Looks like utility is low for both teams. Hampus somehow comes away with an opening frag. Good damage from Davey, though, to dink him. And, however, Barbar on the other side of the map, the Lurker, when he gets two kills, that's when the round really falls apart. Jonji jumping up into drop and taking the face off of Freddy, but Rez instantly trades it and leaves Davey all alone. Man who did some of the early damage in the round gets the first kill, the second kill, the headshot. Very clean, but Draken comes around from drop or from long B, and I think the bomb initially was thinking about making its way over to Barbar. <laughs> because of those two kills, but they've, they've made that mistake once. Yeah, they, they should have <laughs> not gonna do it. This time, Barbar just kind of laid it towards B, and uh, in that scenario, I think sure you don't want to lose lose the two players in connector. I think uh, you're fine with losing one in that kind of scenario, but mm -hmm. it definitely draws the attention of Davy, and that's all the space Draken needs to to either get on the side to get a bomb plant, which he can play pretty nicely from that angle because he knows roughly where Davy is after getting a kill. Yeah, uh, but yeah, you could have probably just like. Walked onto the site, Davey probably would have rotated to A. Um, got on that late plan. This boost, yeah. will it be any good? It's oh, oh my gosh, I don't even know. There's no way he could have. Whoa, double smoke, bad communication. <laughs> that's a huge, like, that's a huge thing, right? This, especially the when you're low on utility as well. Yeah, you're wasting arguably the most important piece of, of utility you could have in a round. Yeah, and uh, that's and seven seconds of a roadblock. And if you're on the other team, you hear smokes, and you're yeah. like, oh, they just double smoke drop. All right, we can abuse that in a second. It's like one of the best things, especially when you uh, back when Inferno was installed in the map pool, you would go like, oh, they double smoke B. Yeah. And you just know that, like, that's going to... Everyone's, gonna, like, smiling at each other. Yeah, yeah, because you know, you, like, you, it's not going to be that standard, like, oh, we have to go in towards B with 17 seconds left Smoke's on the clock. Strike. Yeah. All right. NIP deal. smokes coming out yeah, from... Uh, smokes. They've Swedes. actually got two two over there. That's kind of interesting. They've they've left a, a gap in the middle. Davey I'm not is, sure if that's intended. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm not sure if they, they're trying to focus people in, but they've whatever is whatever they're doing isn't working out very well. Really nice pick from Draken, but it is really late now at this point. 1v3, oh. so much damage dealt. That boost is coming out. We've seen this boost uh, be kind of unnecessary in this situation, but it doesn't matter. Uh, they... they they definitely sold the uh, sold me on that round. Really nice hold. Davey doing a good job. Sometimes yeah. when your teammates are smoked out and you're the only person on the other side of the smoke, you just have to frag. You, know, you can't yeah, fall yeah. back through smoke. So important that he stay alive and he got those kills. And Canada doing a surprisingly good job here. Yeah, really, they really are. Uh, you know, I think Epsilon, if we talk to them after, would be like, oh, we played like ass. Yeah, no, prob <laughs> yeah probably, probably. <laughs> but from our perspective, we, I can see a lot of good things to say about how yeah, Canada... I mean, yeah, like, sure, there's been a couple of mistakes from Epsilon here and there, but a lot of the rounds that Canada have won is just bait, like straight up because Canada has played well. Mm -hmm. It's not been fluke rounds in that sense. Definitely not. Well, this time... 
pretty good buy on, on the CT side, even though Janji is playing with the auto shotty, he's playing that drop room area, so that's going to be perfectly fine. Yeah, sweet. The Davey dude. this time over towards the A bomb site. Oh, oh. Oh, oh my oh, god. Geez. He just got. Okay, that might be it. Yeah. That's a really unfortunate way to go. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> what an oh, oh, insane shot. Here we are talking about how, how nice of a job Team Canada are doing, and then they get caught out. Basically talking ourselves into the next round. Like, oh, this, this OT might be possible. Yeah, there's that's there's no way. Yeah, that's just that is a really unfortunate. I mean, the the one league is insane. Yeah, but and this is unfortunate for Davy as well because he's playing a very volatile position. Yeah, which is unfor disrupt. unfortunate, right? He was he chose to be up there. Yeah, well, he, he cho chose to be up there, but I, I, they had one guy rotating back and forth between uh, between connector and well the door. Uh, towards connector and towards drop room, right? Yeah. Because you want to have some sort of control towards window in case they have